Hello everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing another tour video of a 100% efficient factory. Now the last one we did was actually this one right here for computers. But now what we're actually going to be looking at is the frames. So what these are going to be is like the heavy duty modular frames. I forgot the exact name of them like as soon as I started recording. But you can see here 100% efficiency. So heavy modular frame is what they're called. And here's the 100% efficiency that we have. So I'm going to do a quick tour. Now, I will say I have been working on a video. I did a recording and voiceover of this entire build for the most part. So not really a tutorial, but you can like see my building style and how everything works and how I kind of plan a build without even planning at all. Because when I go into it, I just start with a kind of like general idea of how many rooms I might need, which you can kind of see over here. Like here's just the amount of stuff that I would have in this building. Um, and it's just all fitting it into this building and making it look nice and compact and then getting all the conveyors to it Making it look efficient and most importantly Making it a hundred percent efficient is the main key now. Here's the awesome part I actually planned this to where we can overclock the main manufacturer So we're running at a hundred percent efficiency, but with a lot of these machines we can actually up this to actually get more per minute out of these modular frames so let's walk through the very beginning. So I know I've been in here a couple times going back and forth. So the outside is kind of typical my style for Satisfactory. I have a lot of these pillar frames on the outside. And unlike the other one that we did over there, this one's actually not as tall because we don't need to worry about those massive smokestacks that the refineries had. So we could keep this a lot smaller. The biggest part of the building is just the actual manufacturer. So we're just bringing in these ores from underneath. If you actually look where the ores are coming from, that part's really ugly because I didn't really care. But we're actually bringing in four different types of ores. So we have coal, we have iron, we have copper. But then over on the other side, we have the same two of coal, iron, but then we have limestone. And we'll get into which ones do which as we keep going. Um, so on the back side, so side of the building, pretty much the same as all the other ones I've done. That's not really too different. The back... A little different I mean it's kind of more of an L shape to where usually on all the other ones we kind of had a flat back for the most part everything was pretty even but here that is not the case so we're gonna go land and then start from the beginning I'm trying to figure out if I want to fly through or if we're just going to walk through I think fly because we're gonna have to jump over a lot of conveyor if we do that so when we first walk in you're gonna go to the left and what we're actually doing here is using the alternate recipes for screws so what we're actually doing here is that 100% uh, per minute and or 100 items per minute with a maxed out 200% clock speed. Now this one over here is actually at 184 clock speed mainly because with the Mark IV conveyor belt here it just kind of works out and so I'm actually waiting to see if that actually works completely. Now again if you were to overclock this then it would be slightly different. And then the smelter we're just bringing in from the side here you can see we're just feeding into it nothing really special about it. Uh, overclocked at 150% just to make sure we could even just get everything to the machines in time as you can see here we're running at 100% efficiency on these machines as well so then over on the right side here's actually where we're gonna start building our initial modular frames not the heavy ones just the initial modular frames so here we're gonna have the foundry which is why we have the coal mixed with iron and that's going to give us our steel ingots you can see here running at 100% and then this machine is also running at 100%, even though we're kind of getting close. Um, I've been kind of touching this one a little bit, trying to make it a little bit more uh, refined. But again, if we overclock, we can fix this problem. Um, so that's the good news. So we do have another Mark IV conveyor belt here. So you're going to see a lot of Mark III and Mark IV conveyor belts. And then a couple Mark Vs. But those I've kind of been trying to get rid of as much as I can. So you're mainly going to see between the Mark III and Mark IV. Um, over here on the left side next to the screws that we were making we're actually making our steel pipes So here's where we're making those and sending them right next door. We're at hundred percent efficiency again We're sending them right next door into the manufacturer, which we will get to over on the right side across from those Here's where I was saying we are making these steel framed or Wait steeled frame that doesn't sound right, but pretty much they're just the regular frames instead of heavy-duty ones so here, we're actually running at 100% efficiency as well. Let me check the other one, 100% efficiency. So the main thing is we need 10 per minute, and so we have each one making five. So we are using a alternate recipe. 
because the other ones, instead of getting like two per minute, we're getting three with this alternate recipe and just makes things a little bit easier for again, for us to overclock. The kind of premise of this design was how can I account for overclocking? You know, still get the initial one at 100%, but then still overclock and eventually get to 100%. I haven't fine tuned the overclocking yet. I'm like just getting done, just finalizing everything for the vanilla one. Yeah, but then over across here is where we have the actual manufacturer. You can see everything coming in. We'll wait here a second. We have the screws, the frames right there. And then we have the pipes. Then over here, we have the Mark V conveyor belt. One of the very few that we do have. And this one's actually going to be bringing in like the encased, um, what do they even call them? Encased beams? Encased, in, 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 oh my goodness, encased industrial beam. It's very late <laughs> right now. So... Yeah, we have all four items going into here. Up top, we actually have this walkway that allows us to see how we're running. You can still see that we are running at 100% efficiency. And one thing I do need to go do is I actually need to put this back up to 100. So I can see, I was kind of messing around with it to see like how long it would last. And I could actually see there as time went on, the number was getting lower. Because it was at like 300 and now it's at 120. So obviously it just wasn't right. So we need to put that back up to 100. And we should be good to go because we need 200 screws per minute, 10 encased industrial beams per minute, 30 steel pipes, and then we need 10 modular frames. And so we are having all those. And again, like I've been preaching, is we can overclock all of this, which is a very good thing. And then so in this room across from the second part of the manufacturer, we actually are making our iron plates or in Again, alternate recipe so we can get more, but we're making the plates here so we can take them over, you can see here, into the next room where we are making the actual frames themselves, which require the steel tubes and then the reinforced iron plates. So you can see we're making three per to where some of these other ones, I think it's only making one. Yes, but instead of making one, we're making three. That's the big advantage here of why we're using that alternate recipe. Then next door to this, we're making the encased industrial beams here. You can see we're like right at 100%, or actually we're at 78% efficiency. So this one, I know we can up a little bit more. Um, I'm sure it's probably because of these. It's like really close. It's like right at the edge. So every now and then it might not be hitting that uh, threshold. Um, and there might be a small gap in between. But the main part is our manufacturer is running at 100%. And I know we can overclock this as well. I would say these beams are probably going to be like the biggest choke point when it comes to overclocking the manufacturer on how far we can really get with those. So that's just kind of the main thing here. Across the hall, we're making iron plates because we need the plates to make the reinforced iron plates. And then next door to this is actually where we're making the wire, um, which I'm trying to remember what the wire is going to. I've been working on this for like three hours in total. The build itself only took me like an hour and a half. It's just now fine tuning everything. I've been in this building for so long, just trying to fine tune everything. Um, where are we taking the wire? I'm like actually kind of lost right now. So we're taking the wire. Oh, right, we take it outside. We take it outside. It's gonna go up in, into the hallway and then down into the assembler where here is where we're making the reinforced plates. That's what it was. I got there eventually. So then I mentioned the beams are like our main choke point. So that actually is true. So over here is where we are making those. So we are at a 200% efficiency on the actual foundry. And then we're running at 147%. So we do have room to overclock. So that's still the case. Originally, I only had one of these and it just wasn't doing it. So I actually had to branch off and add another, which is what my initial plan actually called for. But then I tried to see if I could just use one and overclock it to the max and it just wasn't getting enough. So I, I did need to add another. Yeah, so we do have the room to overclock, but I think the foundry is going to be like our main choke point here. Um, we're actually running out of coal, which is kind of surprising. So I'll need to look at that. Um, and then the next room over is the very the exact same pretty much. But instead of taking, wait, how did I just, where did I just go? Because this should be coming in. I'm good. Oh, that was that one making the. That one's making concrete. I thought I just was in this room, but you can see the steel beams here. Um, we're making them in this room, and then the next room over. 
and then across the hall for the last room what we have is our storage for our stuff so you can see that we actually have three full stacks and then we're just starting a new one and then if we come to the outside you can actually see where we're going to take those frames out and then transport them to wherever we need to go but yeah so i've been working on this for the past three hours i think in total and i'm very very happy with how it turned out because it was a lot of just planning like i wouldn't even say planning but the this is actually the most planning i've ever done for a building because this is the first building I ever planned out how many rooms I would need and how I can actually organize them per the ores that I would need, you know, separating them side by side and just what was required. And this is what I did for my planning, but then did the entire building on the fly, um, all of the routing on the fly. And yeah, I do have a video for that. I'm probably going to make it into a couple parts. And I really want your guys' feedback on if you want that type of video. And if you do, I will have a link in the top right or also in the description when it comes out at a later date in case this comes out first so yeah thank you for watching guys it is greatly appreciated as always i am sorry for the long period in between uploads i've just been very busy um with school and work so i'm sorry it's been a month since i've uploaded um it really depends on which video comes out first i mentioned it in my build video but i'm also going to mention it in this one as well in case this one comes out first so thanks for watching guys, it is greatly appreciated as always, and let me know what you guys think of this build in the comments down below, and let me know what I should do next. So, bye bye!